Our first step is to take this 97 cent baluster from Lowe's and make our frame out of it. Cut one end off. Turn that around. Measure what you want your frame to be. We're going to do 10 inches. Be our template for the first side. You take this one, flip it twice, move it down, put your template on top of it, and hold the end together with your finger so it's flush, the left end. Then move that down to the blade till it touches. Take your template and put it in front of you and cut your second one. Put that one over here to your right. Flip this twice, move it down. Put your template on top, hold the end flush, back it up against the fence and then move it down just till it touches. Oop, simple. Yeah, four all the same. Okay, so this is what we cut from the two inch by two inch by 42 inch baluster. The corners came together nicely. Now we're ready to glue and staple them. Using one side as a template for the other three made the miters come out just right. If we'd wanted to make a rectangle canvas, we would just use one side for a template of the opposite, side one and side three, and do the same for sides two and four. I'm just going to use Elmer's glue all to join these sides. Use quite a bit. And then we'll put a staple in each one. Okay. 
So I've turned it over, cleaned it off a little bit, and put the last two staples in. So this will dry in about 35 minutes, but I'm going to let it set for a few hours. <clears throat> so we have our frame. It's really solid. And what you want to do, it's pretty much ready to stretch. You just need to go back over, use some 180 grit sandpaper, and just go over the rough edges and any, any sharp edges. And you want to take a hammer and nail your staples in so they're down to at least flush, if not below the surface of the board. So. You probably know when you buy two inch by two inch board, actually what you get is one and three eighths by one and three eighths, but that's gonna make a nice, a nice gallery edge on there. The canvas that I buy, <clears throat> excuse me, I buy in a pack of two, it's called Heavyweight Durable Duck Canvas. It comes in a pack of two for $11.99 on Amazon. Each piece is four feet by five feet. So you have 20 square feet and that comes out to about 60 cents per square foot. And you wanna start with a pretty straight edge so that when you stretch it onto your frame, it'll, it'll, you won't have to worry so much about wrinkles. So you just make a snip there and pull that, it has a uh, hem all the way around. Just pull the hem, and that's gonna give you a straight edge to work with. Okay, we have the frame all smooth, no points, ready to stretch. So whichever side we choose to be the front, you'll put that face down. And canvas, you'll cut out so that you have about three inches all around. And put that in the center. Turn it around, get the opposite side and pull it really tight. Go back to your first side and do one on either side. Pull them tight. And then do this the for the second side. Get it really tight. And you don't need to use a stretcher because this gets it as tight as it needs to be. Plus, when you gesso it, it's gonna make up, it's gonna tighten it even more. Now, you don't wanna go, right now, you don't wanna go any closer than this to these corners because you're gonna need room to fold these corners, so you wanna let that stay free. So, start on your third side. Just pull that tight. Do it just like before. And then really tight. And two more.
Yeah, your corner. Okay, you want to first pull the center like this. Okay, I got a little better angle on this so we can see better, I think, but this is the one we just did, so we want the other one to have the same, the same pleat right here. So that means that this one is gonna, this one's gonna come like this. So, first thing you do is pull this, and then pull this corner, so there's a little pleat at the back, but no pleat on the, where you can see it from the front. And then you take this and pull it down like that. Work it with your fingers. Now let's double check. Okay, that matches. So we'll put a staple in that. And then I'll go ahead and work out the any wrinkles. Sorry, you're out of range. Okay. So there we've got. That one goes that way. And that one goes that way. Now this one, this would be considered the opposite side. So this one we want to go like this, so. Okay, so we have our canvas all stretched and it, it looks something like this. So we don't wanna leave it like that. So we're gonna trim it and just trim it so it looks like this. And when you do, just use the, this board as the guide for your scissors and just go along like that. And I want to show you one more thing before we finish with this, with, with this part. I tape mine on the back just so that the paint doesn't go any farther than I want it to. If you're going to sell your paintings, a lot of People are particular about that. Some could care less, but it's better to do it now and make everybody happy. Okay, all ready to gesso. Okay, we have our canvas stretched and stapled and trimmed, and so we're ready to do our gesso. This is what it looks like. This is the consistency of it. And you can see it, it mounds a little bit. So the recipe for that is for a couple of canvases, maybe just one canvas, is um, a quarter cup of either baby powder or cornstarch or calcium carbonate and one tablespoon 
of white acrylic tube paint, one tablespoon of white glue, and enough water to just make it the consistency of house paint. And what I do when I make it is I use my powder. I usually use cornstarch because it's something I've always got. And um, I'll mix the water in with the powder first so that the powder is uh, turns to liquid then. And then I mix in the glue with that and then the paint with that and then enough water to make it the right consistency. Nice thing about making your own canvases is you can always have them when you need them. You don't have to worry about the hobby store being out of them or not having the size you want and they're expensive. If you buy a gallery style canvas, you might pay one this size, a 10 by 10, could, could be as much as $40, anywhere from 20 to 40, whatever they wanna charge. And um, this one to make it was $2. I'll put the recipe on the screen so you'll so you'll have it. But I usually make six canvases of different sizes at the same time, and then um, of course I gesso them all at the same time. But I'll take that recipe and quadruple it. And I have some left over that way, but gesso is expensive. It's as much as a dollar an ounce. And this is, like I said, practically free. This will dry really fast in probably 20 minutes, but I think I'll wait a couple of hours and then I'll sand it and then I'll put the second coat on and probably let that set overnight. You need to get the ridges out because it'll dry that way and then you have to sand that off. And it kind of is like concrete when it dries. This morning I sanded from yesterday the gesso that we put on and then I let it set all day today and then I sanded it again and um, I use 120 grit sandpaper and it doesn't take a lot of sanding you can feel it it'll start to feel, feel smooth and you want to sure you get the edges and get the rims outsides and just feel it and see if it feels smooth 
So this was a 10 by 10, and the back has tape on it. I painted right up to the edge of the tape, so there will be a clean finish on there, and then the paint will, that will fill in the spot where the paint doesn't come around too. So that's a 10 by 10. I've got a 10 by 10 here to show you what that size can look like finished. This one's been varnished. Here's a couple of little ones, a couple of little six by sixes. This is a 9 by 9 I don't think you can even buy 9 by 9 frames. And this is a rectangle. This is an um, 11 by 14. This is the Bloom Method and uh, the Swipe Technique. And I used um, a spatula to swipe. And then this is a 12 by 12. But the colors just turn out gorgeous. They're so bright. I'm not sure I even want to varnish this. So, okay, well thank you so much and I hope this was helpful for you and I'll see you next time.